just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that things hate me, damn Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Well, um, we'll go ahead and start with um, Monique's intro. Yes. And we'll go from Welcome there. back to Fort Meade Declassified. I'm Monique McFadden from the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office. And today we have with us Wish of a Lifetime recipients, Paul Lang, Kenneth Hughesman, and Thomas Fisher, to tell us about their story about how they met on Fort Meade almost 60 years ago. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Glad to be here. Yep. Glad to be here. Yes. Okay. Paul, why don't you start off by telling us about what brought you back to Fort Meade today? Well, we first uh, we first got involved uh, uh, with wanting to do a trip, and uh, Kathy, Tom's uh, wife, uh, she uh, worked for a AARP and uh, found out that which of a lifetime was uh, going to provide uh, uh, trips back for veterans uh, from their uh, from their uh, places of, of deployment, and we were we were in Thailand, but uh, uh, wish of a lifetime didn't want to go to that. I assume it was expensive that, <laughs> but. Kathy and, and Ken had mentioned about, uh, well, maybe going back to, to Washington, D.C. and Fort Meade, where we, where we first formed our unit. Our unit was formed at Fort Meade uh, okay. uh, during the Vietnam conflict. And that was 1966. And uh, so we applied for, we all applied for that individually. And uh, they, accepted, they accepted our applications and took us and Brought, brought us back here to Fort Meade. Wonderful. How many years has it been since you've been back? I have never been back since 1966. Wow. This is my first trip back. What about you, gentlemen? Same. First Every, time? Mm-hmm. And I was back here probably around 1972, 73. For, my wife and I and my came back here for a visit. <clears throat> and we came through the post at that time just for a short ride through and then gone. So could you have imagined uh, the post as it is today from the post that you knew uh, prior to deploying to Bangkok? Uh, no. <laughs> it's, it's Not at all. It's grown enormously since that time. And it's, it's amazing how much they've added to this post because it was, it was a really nice post then, but now it's got to be phenomenal. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So you guys... Who was drafted and who enlisted? I was drafted, Paul was drafted, Tom enlisted. Okay, so you were in a little longer then? Yes. Okay, so, and when you enlisted or you got drafted, how did you end up here at Fort Meade? I mean, Fort Meade was <clears throat> what to you guys on the formation of your unit? Well, we were, t Paul and I were part of the signal corps. We were teletype cryptographers. And we were stationed at Fort Gordon, Georgia, and we just got orders for, for uh, I don't know exactly how our battalion headquarters came together. Maybe Tom can explain that better. Well, <clears throat> back in 60, early 66, they decided that they needed more transportation facilities in, uh, Thailand, in, in Vietnam to haul materials around. <clears throat> so we were, they formed the uh, 519th, to tr do do that logistics process in Thailand, and then before we left, and it was September of '66, they they stopped us from going because activity in Thailand grew so much that they had no transportation battalions there to haul stuff around for the Army and the Air Force and the Navy, so they held us up till they could get, get a this place for us to go to in Thailand, and then in December we all shipped out mm -hmm. to go to a little town called Phnom to start because they didn't have a place for us anywhere else. And then we started a battalion in five companies. So it was about between 1,100 and 1,200 men when everything was all set, set up over there. And then a month or two later, we moved to Karat, Thailand to the help, to, next to an Air Force base. 
And then from there, we had the logistics for all the, in, anywhere in Thailand, hauling any supplies that anybody needed. Okay. Wow. Outstanding. And none of us were transportation. We, none of us drove yeah. yeah. trucks. Yeah. <laughs> that, was not our, that was not our MOS. Okay. So how long were you here at Fort Meade before you guys deployed together? Did they wait? Nine months. Wait, nine, we, months. nine months. Yeah. Okay. We, we showed up. We showed up. Uh, Ken and I showed up from Fort Gordon the last week of March, and uh, they started forming the company the first or second week of April. Yes. I so came in we, a couple of weeks after them. Yeah. And then, yeah. so it started in April, getting, bringing the guys in to, that were going to be the headquarters. Yeah. Wow. So what are some of your favorite memories together? <laughs> well, we've got 57 years of memories, so yes, we yes. have a lot, a lot of them. But, you know, certainly it all was all established in the military. But over the last 57 years, we've met six or seven times probably. Yeah. In different, we've met in uh, different uh, states. Uh, Las, we were in Las Vegas. We were in Minnesota. We were in... Um, Colorado Springs. Oh, oh, ah, yeah, uh, Colorado Springs, and so uh, St. Louis. We have in, yeah. St. Louis, and so yeah, we've had we've been friends forever. I mean, we were us three were really close overseas, and we were kind of like the three amigos, yeah. and so <laughs> so we were, we've been good friends forever. But uh, we've had a lot, a lot of good memories, uh, not only here in at Fort Meade, but overseas, and, and uh, we just have always hung hung tight, and we've kept uh, kept together for all these years. Yeah, when we were in Thailand. You lived in a hooch, what was called a hooch, and there were six guys that lived in the hooch. Mm -hmm. And the three of us were in the same hooch. So that just drew it all together even more, because mm -hmm. we, sp we spent 18 total months together in our career. And, and so nine, of that, nine or ten of those months were in the same hooch. <laughs> so you get to know something. And that was a favorite mem memory? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would oh, say wow. specifically a favorite memory of mine was, was when, when we were here, we got to go to different places. Uh, I, I, had never been, I had never been off the, off the West Coast until I went in the Army. Oh, wow. And I'd never flown in a plane until I went in the Army. Mm -hmm. But uh, while we were here, going to, going to Baltimore, I remember, I remember one weekend we went to a, 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 a baseball game in, in, in Baltimore, mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think they were the Orioles then. Yes. Yes. But the stadium, the stadium that they had in Baltimore in 1966, the nosebleed section, I mean, it was, it was like that and it was a <laughs> steep angle. So we kind of looked down on everything and then going to Washington DC to see the, some of the things that were the history of our country. And it was it was special to me because, you know, all, I was from the West Coast and all I had was U.S. history to to go on. I'd never been to Washington D.C. and what a what a experience that was to be able to go to Washington D.C. and take in the the Capitol things and Arlington and and those kind of things. Those are special memories to me. Mm -hmm. Very are very much. I can imagine, and uh, you guys were able to uh, see that again as part of this. Um, this time we have, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, our, our first first day, Sunday was our first day, and and uh, uh, we had a tour guide that took us around the Capitol Mall area. We didn't get to spend as much time at different places we liked, but we didn't we didn't think it was going to be you know, a place we could just browse around and spend a few hours and mm -hmm. stuff like that. We just had to, we just had to, uh, to look at the, the look we, at, we still Tom managed to walk 14,000 steps yesterday. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Tom said. There you go. There you go. Oh, wow. Outstanding. Chuck Yang here from Command Information. I have a few items to share. On Thursday, 31 August, at the Post Theater, in recognition of the International Overdose Awareness Day, Army Substance Abuse Program is hosting a play at the Water Pipe on Broadway, Don't Catch the Vapors. Check it out. I think it'll be a great program. Also, tune in on Thursday, 7 September, as Colonel Sapp, Garrison Commander, will host another Town Hall Facebook Live session. 
Lastly, back to school safety. Please use caution as children head back to school. That's it for this week. Stay safe and see you next time. You know, this goes back to what we just said about just, you know, your favorite memories, but also, you know, how has your Army career just bonded the three of you together for so long? 57 years, that's awesome. So I had a question I was wondering about. Um, okay, today it's really easy to stay in touch. In the prior to 1970, when you guys <laughs> disbanded, or you didn't disband, the unit continued in continued Thailand, and you went back to do the things that you were doing, and, uh, you know, each went back to where they came from. Um, how difficult was it, or how... How did you guys end up getting in touch or staying in touch with each other? Well, back then, they had this thing called telephone landlines. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we used calls. I mean, we knew before we left, we, we got all the addresses and, fo and phone numbers where everyone's going to be. So that we, at least when we got back, we already knew that where they were. Mm -hmm. So then we just started calling on the phone to keep in contact. And then we'd go visit one another periodically. We went to Wisconsin, Ken came uh, down to Chicago, Paul went to the, uh, the area up there, Paul saw us, so we got a, all got together over time like that. We just kept kept it rolling. It was, it, and Tom is probably the glue that really has kept us together. We've been friends for a long, long time, but Tom is always keeping contact with each one of us and, and usually organizing things. He's, that's yeah. a, one of his gifts is organizing. Yeah. And so, oh, wow. But you know what? It didn't take a whole lot to bring us together. We're going to St. Louis in a few more months. And that's where Tom's from. So, yeah, we're, um, we're just we're, we're tight. Well, it's, uh, Always will be. It, 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 was, it was special because uh, uh, Tom would try to, keep, try to keep in touch with us. I know I, I, I was vacant for a few years, but... Um, we came. We, we came back, and like like Tom was saying, I uh, uh, in the in the uh, would have been the late seventies. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I went. Uh, my family had moved to Michigan, and uh, we were only there a year. But on the way back from a from a, a training conference, uh, I stopped at at Ken's. We stopped at Ken's house. Kept in touch with him. So was able to to set up a time where we could stop, see he and his wife, his wife there. He had two kids then, and, and my wife and I had two kids, and they were all, they were both both of them were about the same age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got to see him uh, uh, for a period of time, and then while we lived in Michigan, also got to see Tom and Kathy, because we kept in contact with them when they lived in Dayton and Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. And, and Tennessee, and Tennessee. But uh, it was, I guess we all got busy. I mean, uh, they, we all had kids, so uh, we got, got uh, kind of focused up on them and doing, doing life in the, place that, the places that we, we did. Um, of course, we were separated by states then because my wife and I, we moved back to, to, uh, to California in 1977. But uh, uh, we stayed there, we stayed there all for, for, the, rest of, for the rest of our time. But uh, um, again, Tom, Tom called me. Uh, I mean, we kept in phone contact sometimes, but he, he called me one day. I was sitting at, at my computer when we had computers and when he said, Paul, I knew exactly who it was because I knew exactly what his his uh, his voice sounded like, and that was that was what nineteen ninety. I don't remember. It'd been twenty some years already. It, huh? Yeah, it had already been twenty years, and from then on, we've I think seen each other almost every year. Yeah, you know, let me say one thing about. We were together 18 months, Paul, all of us were, but Paul and I were together for 18 solid months. And so Paul left Thailand about three days before I did, and then I flew back. So who do I stay with for a week before I went back to school? Paul. With Paul. <laughs> Me. I just couldn't get enough Because he, <laughs> he came to the West Coast. Yeah, I had never been so, to California either. No. 
Yeah. And and of course I talked about him. My my parents were alive then, so uh, he, he stayed he stayed there because yeah, my I wife didn't and I had a little wife, no. uh, only a little apartment. <laughs> Not that time. <laughs> but uh, so he got to meet my my parents, and I took him up where I was raised in the mountains, uh, uh, in the mountains of Southern California. So outstanding. Uh, Can I say something about yes. the contact? Yeah. Because when we went overseas. In that period of time, there were no cell phones, no spike, a Skype or whatever. So you could not just space pick up the phone and FaceTime and all that stuff. So yeah. it was basically... Snail mail. Snail mail. And so you didn't hear your wife or husband or your parents' voices for a year, basically. And then while I was gone, she was working for the Air Force in a capacity about secret airfields and, and this stuff. And... So she, that's how she was keeping active uh, while I was gone. And, uh, so that today, I'm so happy for the military today because they have those technology things that they can go ahead and use to stay in contact with your family because mm -hmm. that's such yeah. an important part. Because we saw guys get dumped by their girlfriends or and fiancés because they weren't being communicated with. Mm -hmm. They lost that contact and the girl got tired of it and just moved on so this today is very important that they have all those access oh yeah and my dad did it the old-fashioned way he used to write us all the time <laughs> you know okay. write letters write letters i couldn't mm -hmm. wait to get a letter yeah that was the old that was the yes. old snail mail yes yep. <laughs> and you know if you didn't write people that's a, we wrote letters all the time because if you don't write people you don't get anything back and you get lonely yeah. And so, you, in order to get receive mail, you got to write, you got to send it out. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, they gave us, if you remember, we had an opportunity to call back once a, the only one time during that course, and I talked to my mom and dad, but it was through mm -hmm. some other operator. Like I would say, Mom, how are you? I love you. Then, the, then she would relay that to my mess, to, to my mother and dad, and then it, it was crazy. Oh, wow. It was not, it's, no. So, you almost had a translator. It was a translator, exactly. <laughs> just, mm -hmm. just to communicate because you were halfway around the yeah. world and that was once a year only one time did we get it did you do it yeah okay yeah well, i didn't even know about that oh <laughs> i want to say it was called telstar <clears throat> and it was a kind of like a satellite radio that the military had and i'm not sure where i where where, where we did it from i think it was Corato mm -hmm. and I don't. Our unit didn't have that capability, so it must have been a headquarters unit of, of something that was, that was there at that that base in, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So you guys have managed to see each other about once a year, mm -hmm. uh, at least recently. And you said that you've been to six or seven different places. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Colorado Springs, and uh, but. What does the future hold for you guys? You mentioned something about St. Louis here coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, September we're going back. My wife and I are from St. Louis, so we go back every year for family reunions. So last year we invited Ken and Paul to come to St. Louis for our other reunion with them. So they came and we had a reunion the first four days or something like that, and then we did our family stuff. But So this year they liked St. Louis so much that they we said, where are we going to go next year? And they want to come back to St. Louis. So middle of September of this year, we're all going back to St. Louis and seeing more sites and getting together again. See, I want to come. I live in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, 40,000 people. They, I was kidding. We only got one stoplight in our city, so they don't want to come to our city. Nothing to see. <laughs> There's not enough traffic in this city. <laughs> not I enough know, that's traffic. Why they we wouldn't feel at home. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, um... I want to thank you guys for coming. I don't really have any other questions. I do want to, um, on behalf of a, a lot of people, I want to thank you for your service. Um, I know that that was a difficult time in our history, uh, whereas you and your generation made sure that the uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines were never treated the same way that you guys were treated when you returned home. So. Um, I know it got worse after 67, <laughs> but um, but I want to thank you guys for your service. You, you've thank done you. a lot to, um, uh, we wouldn't be able to do the things we're able to do now if people like you hadn't served, whether yeah. they volunteered or didn't run when they got drafted. 
Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and can we say that it, you kept the tradition going by your military service along the way? So you keep them. You keep, well, we started in our time. You guys are still doing it today, and we thank you for your service. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, thank I you. appreciate it. Glad to do it. Glad to do it. Gentlemen, it truly was an honor to have this day with you and to share your experiences. And um, we were very, very pleased to. Um, I know that you all got to meet with the Colonel and, mm-hmm. and um, the Sergeant Major and, you know, to share your experiences with them. And I like to hear about how different things are now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so thank you all again. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes, we've really enjoyed your visit here at Fort Meade, so I hope you... Uh, Can I just say one thing? Yes, sir. Because um, Shannon will probably hear us, but she orch- she orchestrated the whole thing, and we are so thankful. But I said before, the highlight of this is is, this, is being here at Fort Meade. We've all been in D.C. before, at least Tom and I have a couple of times, but you know what? This has really been special. I, might, I, just, I just started crying, just mm. r- reminiscing about what it was like then, and then meeting... You know the the, the colonel and and, and the uh, sergeant major and you as well another sergeant major, <laughs> but I mean it's been just a joy. This this really has made we all said that right. Yeah. This is the highlight of our trip. So we yeah. thank you for doing this for us. This was my pleasure. Yes, really senior all of senior officers and sergeants are getting younger. <laughs> <laughs> they are. That's kind of That's the way it goes. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was so much fun. Well, thank you all. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us. And thanks to everyone who tuned in or listened today, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of Fort Meade Declassified.